Dr. Karen Tang, and today we are talking about something that has TikTok all in an uproar, tampon safety, and whether something called titanium dioxide is harmful for your health. If you're new to my channel, I'm a board certified gynecologist, and I talk about all things reproductive health and pelvic health, which is a little bit of sass. And so if you haven't already, subscribe, like, and hit notifications so you don't miss any information. So what is the controversy? There's at least one, if not multiple, viral videos on TikTok where someone is saying that they had a bunch of health problems, ovarian cysts, fertility issues, and they looked at the packaging for their tampons and saw this material called titanium dioxide, did a Google search, and saw that it might have an increased risk of cancer. And so they sort of extrapolated that all of their other health issues were from the titanium dioxide. So in this video, we're going to cover a bunch of topics. Number one, what is titanium dioxide? Number two, is there any evidence of harm to your health? Number three, how much of titanium dioxide is actually in your tampons? Number four, how do we vet information that we get on the internet or on social media? And how do we know when something is a genuine concern and when it is just a rumor that there's really no substance to? And number five, finally, how do we use tampons safely? And what is important for us to know about tampon use? So for this video, I went all investigative journalist. I didn't just Google search. I actually spoke to a PhD toxicologist who used to run clinical trials for the FDA and now is in charge of ensuring commercial safety of feminine hygiene products. And so, you know, not just like some person on TikTok, uh, because I really wanted to get to the heart of this. I'm not an expert on titanium dioxide, so I wanted to talk to somebody who was. So what is titanium dioxide? This is a chemical compound that's actually found in lots of materials, including things like sunscreens, cosmetics, uh, foods, candy, uh, chocolate products. Uh, you may have heard of there was a recent controversy involving Skittles and titanium dioxide. Um, and so it's extremely, extremely common. It's actually used as a whitening agent in all of these products. So the punchline is, is that titanium dioxide has never been shown to have evidence of harm in humans. The concern about titanium dioxide and cancer risk was actually only in rat models where they exposed rats to really high levels of inhaled titanium dioxide. So again, it was only based on an inhaled uh, mode of contact. Um, that there might be an increased risk of potentially lung cancers in rats. Now that has never been shown to be the case in humans. And again, this material has been used in lots of commercial products uh, for decades, um, and there's no evidence of harm in humans. Important to know that the amount of titanium dioxide those rats were exposed to in inhalation studies was way higher than anything that human beings are allowed to be exposed to in commercial products. So what people may have noticed when they Googled is that in 2021, the European equivalent of our Food and Drug Administration called the European Food Safety Authority banned the use of titanium dioxide oxide as a food additive. And they did that because they felt that there was not enough evidence that there was no genotoxic harm. That does not mean that there was evidence of genotoxic harm. It means that they felt like they wanted more evidence to prove that there was not. And the US FDA, the British and the Canadian authorities saw the same information and felt that because there was no actual evidence of harm that they would allow it. So it just subtle differences in how these organizations evaluated the same data. But overall, again, no evidence of harm. Next, the question of titanium dioxide in tampons specifically, and I actually learned something here, and it's why it's important not to jump to conclusions because the amount of titanium dioxide is super negligible because it's barely in the tampon. It is not in the cotton or the material that is in the substance of the tampon. It's not even really in the string. It's actually mostly in a thread that connects the string to the tampon. So a super teeny teeny amount, and it's actually not even in the part of the tampon that touches your body. So um, the amount of it is something like 0.1% or less than 0.1%, whereas the FDA allowable for food is something like 1%. So a super teeny amount, and again, not in the portion that's actually contacting your body. And the final thing to know is that the way that it's actually held in the material or the fibers is that it is bound so closely that I learned from this toxicologist, it's virtually impossible for it to actually come out of the material and into your body. So even if it was in the material in the tampon and it was next to the vaginal walls, it really would almost not ever release from the material and go into your bloodstream to be absorbed. Now notice that nothing I've said so far has to do with reproductive health risk, and that's because there's zero evidence of reproductive health risk. I did want to talk about the specific claims from the viral TikTok video. Um, the person said that the you know titanium dioxide had caused ovarian cysts, that she was told by her gynecologist she'd never be able to get pregnant again. Um, I'm obviously not her 
her doctor. I don't know the medical details beyond what she shared on the video. I will just say a couple of things. One is that ovarian cysts are incredibly common in that the vast majority of them are what we call physiologic cysts, which mean that they just come and go. They're not of concern. There are some cysts that we do have to watch more closely or could be concerning, um, but the majority of cysts are benign and not harmful. Um, the other is that, um, you know, in real life, gynecologists don't really come into someone's room and say, oh, you'll never be pregnant again, um, except in very, very specific circumstances. The tubes are completely scarred closed. The cavity of the uterus is completely obliterated from scar tissue. Someone's gone through full menopause. Um, again, we never said something's a zero risk, but, you know, those are the only circumstances that we would say you it's highly unlikely you will be able to get pregnant. So I'll just say that the claims that she's making about the titanium dioxide or tampons causing any of those things is zero based on what we know in the literature. <laughs> or reality. So this brings us to another major point, which is how do you evaluate what you're hearing on social media or the internet? This was a huge problem, obviously, with COVID and vaccines, as there were so many rumors, people saying, oh, I heard that someone got the vaccine and then had a heart attack. Um, you know, there was just so much kind of swirling misinformation out there. It was really hard for people to tell what was what. So uh, I will just say that correlation does not equal causation. That is a major tenet of medicine and public health and why we as healthcare professionals really carefully vet sources of information. That's why there are certain research study designs like randomized control studies where we try and control for as many factors as possible so that we just don't jump to conclusions about an exposure causing something. So for instance, I'll tell you about the VAERS website, V-A-E-R-S. It's the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System uh, for the U.S. government uh, for any vaccine. So literally anyone can get on there and say that I had this vaccine and this happened to me. So if you look on there, it's very illuminating because there are tons of things on there that are obviously not caused by vaccines. There are STDs like gonorrhea, herpes, and chlamydia. A lot of reported cases of STDs after vaccine administration. Um, things like gunshot wounds or, you know, things like head injuries. Um, things that obviously were not caused by the vaccine in any way, shape, or form, but they were reported by people as adverse events of the vaccine. So uh, again, because something happened around the same time as having exposure to something did not mean that the exposure caused the event. So again, vet your sources of information really carefully, look for reliable types of studies, randomized controlled studies, um, you know, clinical trials, uh, information that comes from academic medical centers or government agencies like the CDC or the FDA. Um, you know, those are more or less, you know, as reliable as you can get in terms of the vetting of the information. Finally, I wanted to end on just general tampon information and safety. So the one thing that you do need to know about tampon use is something called toxic shock syndrome or TSS. Um, this is a condition caused by a bacteria called Staph aureus. It's extremely rare nowadays. Um, it used to be more of an issue many decades ago when tampons had a much higher absorbency. They've obviously changed the material since then. Um, but it's still very important that you don't leave a tampon in for a really, really long time and that you change them frequently to prevent toxic shock. So uh, we recommend, the FDA suggests, uh, removing the tampon and changing them at least every eight hours. As gynecologists, we'd probably say more frequently during the day while you're awake to make sure that the tampon is dry. So every two to six hours, depending on how fast you're going through the tampons. Um, also important to choose the tampon absorbency that is the lowest for the amount of flow that you have. So don't use like an ultra super plus tampon if you just have a little bit of light flow. Uh, so change them as often as you need to to keep them dry. Definitely don't keep them in for more than eight hours and then use the lowest absorbency that you can for the flow that you need. Um, and if you want to, you can alternate tampon use with things like pads and menstrual cups, but it's important to know that you can actually get toxic chalk from pads and things like that too. So it's more about just hygiene and keeping things uh, dry um, and not leaving things in for a super long time. So to recap, titanium dioxide, incredibly common, found in sunscreen, cosmetics, foods, and has never been shown to have evidence of harm in humans. Some thoughts based on animal studies at way, way, way higher levels than humans are exposed to. The amount in tampons is virtually nothing, and it's in the tampon in such a way that it's virtually impossible for it to come into your body. Anyway, vet your sources. Correlation does not equal causation. Don't get panicked about things until you can vet the information from a reliable source. And then important to know how to use tampons safely 
specifically to make sure you don't get things like toxic shock syndrome, which are still very, very rare. Um, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's helped to relieve some of your concerns. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you have any ideas for other topics you want me to cover, let me know as well. And so like, subscribe, hit notifications, all the stuff that they tell you to do on YouTube, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.